In this video, we'll be going over placing electrical objects to make an electrical plan for design. To make this easier, let's go into the electrical plan view by first clicking on the Saved Plan View Control dropdown on the top toolbar, and then click Electrical Plan View, which we should have if we're using one of the Chief Architect templates for our drawing. This plan view will switch us to the electrical layer set, which has all layers relevant to an electrical plan turned on, and also changes this over to the electrical default set, so things like text and dimensions will display as set up by those defaults. The most basic electrical objects can be found in the electrical tool. Go to the build menu, electrical, and let's choose an outlet to start with. Let's place some outlets in the plan on this wall and above this cabinet. If we take a camera view, we'll see the first outlet is placed a certain distance above the floor, while the other one is higher on the wall above the cabinet. These distances are set up by the electrical defaults. If we go to the edit menu, default settings, click the arrow next to electrical, general electrical, and then click edit, we can view the defaults for all our basic electrical tools. We can then go down and find the 110 volt outlet. And here we'll have the settings for how it's placed above the floor, base cabinet, or on the side of a cabinet. We can also swap the object used for each default with another from the library by clicking on the library button, or we can modify the object being used directly by clicking on the edit button. If we were planning on using something besides recessed downlights for the majority of our plan, it might be helpful to swap out that light here. In our case, let's leave these settings be. Back in our plan view, which we can get to by clicking on the Plan View tab. Since this outlet is in the kitchen, it will be required to be a GFCI outlet. To make one, we have a couple options. Back in the Electrical Tool, which we can get to by clicking on the Toolbar button, we have a GFCI outlet specific tool. Alternatively, if you've already placed an outlet, we can modify it by first selecting the outlet and clicking on the Change to GFCI Outlet button on the bottom Edit toolbar. If we want to change it back, just click on the button again, and it'll go back to a standard outlet. We can also place them a third way using the Library Browser. In the Library Browser, expand the Core Catalogs, Mechanical Electrical Plumbing, Electrical, and then Outlets. Choose your placement option, and we'll find the standard outlets, GFCI outlets, plus some wider varieties of different kinds of outlets. In addition to placing outlets manually, we have a tool for automatically placing outlets in a room. In the electrical tool is the Auto Place Outlets tool. Click this, then click a room in our plan. It will automatically place 110 outlets in the kitchen, and also recognizes where the sink is automatically placing a light above it. We'll also notice it places GSEI outlets in places like kitchens and bathrooms, in addition to placing lights over inset sinks, but regular outlets in other rooms, like our living area. After we've automatically placed the outlets, they can be moved and adjusted just like any manually placed outlet, like using copy-paste. Since we have a sink in our laundry room, We'll need to convert the auto outlets to GFCI outlets, and we'll need a 220 volt outlet for the washer and dryer. In the electrical tool, we also have quick access to the 220 volt outlet tool, and we can select the remaining outlets and click the convert tool to change them all to GFCI. We can also place light fixtures in much the same way. Go back to the electrical tool and select light. This tool will place different objects based on where you click. For instance, if we place one here on the ceiling, on the interior wall, then one here on the exterior wall, and take a camera view, we'll see it placed a recessed light on our ceiling, 
a sconce on our wall, and a lantern sconce on the outside wall, all according to our defaults for our electrical tools. We can change those at any time by going to Edit, Default Settings, Electrical, General Electrical, and Edit. Here we'll see the chosen library objects for each of the different locations we can place lights. We can also place lights on soffits, but we'll need to be careful with what kind of object we're using. In the plan here, we have a regular soffit object next to a 3D solid we're using as a soffit. If we place a light in the floor plan in the area of both soffits and take a camera view, we'll see the light on the underside of the actual soffit object, but not the solid. Chief doesn't treat 3D solids in the same way it does soffits, so we'll need to take an extra step if we want this to work. Back in plan view, if we select the light, click Open Object, and set the offset from ceiling to be the same value as the thickness of the 3D solid, we'll now see the light in the camera view. To place other kinds of light fixtures, we'll want to use the library browser. Let's go to the core catalog, architectural, and then lighting. In lighting, expand the pendants folder. In this example, let's place a blown glass pendant, and next to it, place the industrial pendant. From here, let's create an elevation view looking at both of them by going to the 3D menu, create orthographic view, then wall elevation. If we select the blown glass light, we can use the edit handle at the bottom to elongate it to get it to the height we want above the island. This doesn't work for all pendants, however. For example, if we try the same with this industrial light, it will warp the overall object instead. It's important to be aware some of our library objects aren't set to be adjusted in the same way. For this one specifically, it's due to the chain holding the light instead of it being a single wire or pole. Let's delete the industrial light, and back in our floor plan, copy the light fixture to the other side of the island. Placing lights under cabinets is just as easy. In the library browser, still in lighting, we'll find a cabinet folder. Click on one of the lights, like the tube light, and click in our plan under a wall cabinet. We can then rotate it and adjust it to get it in the right spot. If we go back to the camera view, we'll see the tube light is sitting underneath the cabinet. We can select the object and click Open Object to view its specification. In this case, we'll see the offset from ceiling value is 0 inches. In this case, the light recognized the underside of the cabinet as the ceiling. For any light fixture, we can modify the light data, like light type, intensity, and color in the Light Data panel. We go over lighting in more detail in our videos on rendering. The last thing we'll go over here is placing switches and connections. In our electrical tool, click on the switch tool. While this is just a single pole switch object, we have additional kinds of switches available in the library browser. Left click to place a switch on a wall. I'll place a couple in the room here. Like other wall-mounted objects, switches have some specific settings. If we select one and click Open Object, on the general panel, we'll see a distance from wall value. This can be increased to move the switch a distance away from the wall. For instance, if we have some other type of object that would normally be conflicting with where the switch is, like a 3D solid. Let's leave that at zero for now. Now, before we make the connections, Let's take a look at the connection defaults. Go to the Edit menu, Default Settings, click the arrow next to Electrical, click Electrical Connection, and then Edit. In here, we can modify the new segment angle, which is the angle between each segment of the spline, and the curvature ratio, which affects how much the connection line curves between each object. 
We can also go to the line style panel and modify these values as desired. We'll leave these settings alone for now and click OK and then Done. Now, still with the electrical tool, click on the electrical connection tool and simply click and drag to create a connection. If we instead right click and drag for the first connection, we'll go into the continuous draw mode. This means the tool will stay on the mouse without us needing to continually click and hold, and we can just keep left clicking to create additional connections. Left click on the same object twice to end the continuous draw mode. We can also make connections to any object we like without needing to define it as or convert it to an electrical object, as well as make connections to no specific object at all. This allows us to fully customize the location of our connection lines. After we've drawn a connection spline, we can click on it and use the edit handle in the middle to adjust its angle. We also have smaller red edit handles at either end of the connection, which let us move the start and end points. These will change to a gray square if they're not directly connected to anything. If we use the electrical connection tool again to connect the light to a second switch, we'll see both switches in the circuit change to a three pole switch. This concludes our overview on placing and connecting electrical objects in a plan.